Welcome again to Historic First Baptist Church Online. Don't forget that you can call in the church and request a song for us to do each week. This week is a request as great as thy faithfulness. Welcome again to Historic First Baptist Church Online. Turn your Bibles to Psalm 91. Psalm 91, and we'll start reading in verse 7. When you have found Psalm 91, 7, please stand for the reading of God's Word. This is the Bible, and the Bible is the Word of God. A thousand may fall at your side and ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Only with your eyes shall you look and see the reward of the wicked. Because you have made the Lord, who is my refuge, even the Most High, your dwelling place, no evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague come near your dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. In their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. You shall tread upon the lion and the cobra, the young lion and the serpent you shall trample underfoot. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him. I will set him on high because he has known my name. The grass withers, the flowers fade, but the word of the Lord remains forever. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for your word and what it teaches us and, and this psalm and what it teaches us about having victory in you. And Lord, I pray that as we go through this passage of scripture that we'll be able to see that victory we have in Jesus Christ and the protection that we have if we turn from our sin and turn to you. And Lord, I pray that you'll bless this message. Just move me aside and speak through me in Jesus' name. Amen. One of the fun things to remember about the book of Psalms is that was the hymn book for the church up until the late 1800s. They switched from using psalms to using a lot more non-battle songs. Uh, and, and one of the fun things to remember is when you're reading a passage like Psalm 91, they're talking about killing 11,000 people, that that's probably what your great-great-grandparents sang in church. Psalm 91 is one I've seen over and over again throughout the COVID-19 pandemic. So I thought it would be a really good idea to cover it in an online service. What is this psalm actually talking about? Well, what it's talking about is a pandemic. It, they were going through a plague in Israel when this was written. And one of the things you need to remember is the Bible is a living book. It doesn't matter that it was written thousands of years ago. It still applies to today, and we can still apply it to our lives today. I used to tell my teens when I was a youth pastor that 95% of God's will for your life is found in the Bible. The other 5% five, five you'll find out by studying the Bible. 
So the con historical context of Psalm 91 is that it was written during a time when uh, they were going through a plague. David wrote this psalm during his punishment for breaking Exodus 30, 11, and 12, which says, Then the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, When you take the census of the children of Israel for their number, then every man shall give a ransom for himself to the Lord when you number them, that there may be no plague among them when you number them. David didn't take the, the ransom for the people. He just went ahead and numbered everybody, uh, took, took, that in, took that law in no consideration, and made sure that he had the number of the people without taking up the tithe and the ransom. So God did exactly what God said he would do. He put a plague on the people. And God punished David uh, and Israel for not calling out David. And the exact, with, with that exact penalty of the plague, and the place where David begged for God's forgiveness actually wound up being where Solomon built the temple. Second Chronicles 3, 1 Chronicles 3.1 says, Solomon began to build the house of the Lord at Jerusalem on Mount Moriah, where the Lord had appeared to his father David, at the place where David had prepared on the threshing floor of Ordon the Jebusite. So David was a sinner who brought the plague. He was the sinner who brought the plague. And so why in Psalm 91 would he be saying that those who are righteous will escape plagues? The main reason is, for, is found in Romans 5, verses 6 and 8. The Bible says, For when, uh, for when we shall, were still without strength in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. God demonstrated his own love toward us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. David knew that if he repented of his sin, he asked God for forgiveness and trusted in him, no matter what came against him, God would be there to protect him. So let's dig into this beautiful, beautiful psalm. Verses 1 through 6 says, He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in Him I will trust. Surely He shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler, from the perilous pestilence, he shall cover you with his feathers, and under his wings you shall take refuge. He, his truth shall be your shield and buckler. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor of the arrow that flies by day, nor of the pestilence that walks in the darkness, nor of the destruction that lays waste at noonday. The Bible says that our trust should be grounded in the Lord, in God the Creator. God created this universe and everything in it. He created coronavirus and the doctors who were trying to defeat it. God is the one in control. And verse 5 says that only he can protect anybody from the boogeyman. <laughs> the terror, I will not be afraid of terror by night. You know, sometimes you get afraid of noises at night. Sometimes kids get really afraid of, the, of, a, of what they call a boogeyman when I was a kid. There's nothing at night that can, that can defeat us if we trust in God. There's no, there's no terror or superstition that we need to be afraid of. The terror by night, nor the error that flies by day, that means that God's the only one who can protect arm, uh, us from armies or enemies. Uh, and even verse 6 says, nor pestilence that walks in darkness. Uh, that means that, co that includes COVID-19. We, be, we should not be afraid or panic because of COVID-19. We should trust in God, our Creator. Oh, and, and in the end, the last thing he says, God will protect us from his ruin, nor the destruction that lays waste at noonday. There is nothing on this earth that can come against God's people. There is nothing on this earth that can overcome God's people, the church. Nothing at all. In verse 7, he says, A thousand may fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand, but no, it shall not come near you. Only with your eyes shall you look and see the reward of the wicked. There is unknown victory on the side of the Lord. It doesn't matter who falls. It doesn't matter who's defeated. It doesn't matter who wins. Whatever battle it may be, God has given us victory. The Bible says that Jesus has already defeated death. Sin has already been destroyed. Hell has already been vanquished, and all we have to do is enjoy the spoils of that battle that Jesus Christ fought. 
Romans 8, 37 says, Yet in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. The Bible says that on the side of the wicked, however, there is ruin. The Bible says that we will see the reward of the wicked in verse 8. Only, only with your eyes shall you look and see the reward of the wicked. That, why, why does it say reward? Because it's kind of using like uh, Romans 6, 23 says the wages of sin is death. The payment for sin is death. Uh, it's, it's speaking poetically. Other translations uh, use retribution and, and, uh, and, and words like that. The meaning is this. We will see the wicked get what's coming to them. And what's coming to them? What's, what, what has been listed over and over again that is coming to the wicked? Pestilence. War. The, the, the reward is, is being seen in them. On January 22nd, 2019, New York passed a, the poorly named Reproductive Health Act, expanding abortion to the point of denying murder charges against men who beat pregnant women to the point of losing their babies. Uh, while, every, while everyone else in other states were passing laws, trying, trying to pass laws to either end abortion or greatly restrict it, New York made beating, women, beating pregnant women less criminal. They made it legal to murder babies even by pro-abortion standards. And right now, New York, as of this week, New York has doubled the corona death rate of both Italy and Spain. Um, if you take New York out of the United States equation, America is one of the best countries to have coronavirus in. That is a horrible horrible thing. That is a horrible thing. New York politicians, God has sent the call to repentance. God is doing his best to shake you from your delusion. And he who sits on the throne, will, who will judge the living and the dead, who made those babies you murdered, is calling you to repent of your sin and turn your life around and turn the lives of everybody in your states around. What does the Bible say to do? In verse 9, the Bible says, that, the Bible says, Because you have made the Lord, who is my refuge, even the Most High, your dwelling place, no evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague come near your dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. In their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. You shall tread on the lion, the cobra, the young lion, the serpent. You shall trample on their foot, because he has set his love upon me. Therefore I will deliver him. I will set him on high, because he has known my name. If you turn from your sin, will COVID go away? No. COVID is here to stay. Coronavirus is here to stay. But its impact will can can be greatly decreased. The judgment of God can be pulled back if we repent. If we repent. In verse 14, the Bible says, Because he has set his love upon me, I will, therefore I will deliver him. I will set him on high because he has known my name. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. I, how, with long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. The Bible says that if we repent of our sin, that God will deliver us. God's not waiting up in the clouds for you to mess up so he can strike you with a lightning bolt. God is waiting right beside you, begging you to turn to him. God is, God is the only righteous judge. He must punish sin. But if we turn to him and call upon him for forgiveness, he will hear us. He will forgive us. Romans 10, 9 says that if you will confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made into salvation. For the scripture says, whoever believes on him shall not be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew or Greek, for the same Lord over all is rich to all who call upon him. 
For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. It doesn't matter what you've done in the past. It, do, it, it doesn't matter how bad things may be. If The only thing that matters is what you do with Jesus Christ. From here on out, God can forgive. God can cleanse a guilty conscience. God can make you new. You can do all things through Christ. Make him your Lord. All, and all it, all it takes is faith. That's it. That's the only thing it takes. Will life be 100% easy after you get saved? No. I mean, he says deliver him. He's talking about bat battles where, where no one, nothing's touching him. He's talking about uh, pestilence and all kinds of things. There are things that are real that happen to Christians. Christians do experience pain. Christians do experience loss. But God said he can deliver. God said he makes life abundant. God said he gives salvation. God says he makes you new. That's the life and that's the joy that we have being Christians. That's the, that's the, the reward for repenting. All it takes is faith. That's it. Ephesians 2, 8 says, For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that's not of yourselves, it's the gift of God, not of works lest anyone should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Jesus Christ for good works, which God has prepared beforehand that we should walk in him. In Christ you have life and you have a plan. God made you. God made you special. God made you for a purpose. And God made you uh, complete in Christ. You, you can start right away growing to be the man or the woman that God has created you to be. God has a purpose for you and he will accomplish it if you put your faith in the risen Christ. What is, look at what Psalm 91 says. Look at verse 14. Because he has said and love on me, I will deliver him. Remember, you, we do have trouble. We do struggle. Christians do experience pain. Christians do experience loss. We do experience trouble. But what does God say? He'll deliver us. Uh, does it say we won't be sick? No, it doesn't. But, but what does it say? God will be there with you through it. God will deliver you. God will give you a good life. Jesus, look, look at what he said in verse 16. Uh, with long life, I will satisfy him. Jesus put it this way in Romans, in John 10, 9 through 11. Jesus said, I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and, and will go in and out and find pastor. The thief does not come except to steal and to kill and destroy. Listen to me. I don't care what anybody is promising you. I don't care what anybody tells you. The, the only way to good life, the only way to have salvation is through Jesus Christ. No matter what we try to fill that God-sized hole in our life with, it's never going to satisfy. Whatever promises someone tells you with drugs, with alcohol, with anything else, no matter what they're trying to promise you, it will not work. It will not fill that void. Only Jesus Christ can. That's why he says the thief... That person is a thief. They're trying to steal your life. They're trying to steal your conscience. They're trying to steal your soul. Jesus says the thief does not come except to kill and steal and destroy. Jesus said, I have come that they may have life and that they might have it more abundantly. Jesus said this, you can have abundant life through him. You can have a full, joyous life through Jesus Christ. And listen what else he says. He says, I'm the good shepherd. The good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. All that other stuff you have to sacrifice things for. You have to sacrifice to have stuff. You have to sacrifice anything for anything else except Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ sacrificed himself for you. Don't let anyone tell you you're not worth as much as they are. Don't let anyone tell you that their life is the only life worth saving. Don't let anybody tell you that you can't have life through Jesus Christ. Listen, Jesus gave himself for you. That's how important you are. You can have that full life through Jesus Christ. So stop trusting thieves and start trusting the only one who can give you abundant life. Stop trusting in people who promise you things they can never, ever give. Things that will only take more and more from you. 
Stop trying to fill that hole in your life with stuff, with popularity, with drugs, with money, with whatever keeps you from, keep, keeps calling you for more and more. Give your life to the only one who gave his for you. Give your life to Jesus Christ. All it takes is faith. Faith isn't believing uh, something. It's not believing a series of facts. Faith is believing something strongly enough to change your life. Believe, believe that Jesus Christ died for your sin and that he rose again just like the Bible says he did. Strongly enough to turn from, from living for other people, to turn from living for stuff, to turn from living for yourself and turn to living for Jesus Christ. Turn from following what other people say and turn to following what the Bible says. That's what faith is. That's called repentance. And the Bible says repent, it means change your direction. Change, turn, change your direction from people, from stuff, and change your direction to the Bible and God and Jesus Christ. That's what faith is. And the Bible says if you put your faith in Jesus Christ, if you believe that he died for your sin and rose again strongly enough to change your life, that you can have that abundant life he's offering. I'm going to put my email address right down here at the bottom. If you're not 100% sure you've done that, if you want that faith, if you want to give yourself to Jesus Christ, Make sure you email me so that I can help you make sure your salvation. May the love of the Father cover you. May the blood of Jesus Christ cleanse your sin. And may the Holy Spirit give you joy and fill you with, with, with everything you, he has coming for you. Thank you.